information that by definition is increasingly accessible, even the most sensitive types of information? And when can using questionable methods to access information be justified in the public interest? Well, I'm joined now from Edinburgh by the computer security expert, Professor Bill Buchanan of Napier University, here in Glasgow, the Strathclyde sociologist, Professor David Miller. And joining us live from San Francisco by the magic of the internet is Hani Fakuri, who's staff, a staff lawyer with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, well, Hani Fakuri, do you think that the issues we've seen arising with the, all these hack and, uh, hacking issues recently um, the campaigns on PayPal, etc. Um, are we just seeing a bunch of kids being criminals, or, or is this some sort of new form of civil action? I think we are seeing a new form of civil action to a certain extent. Um, the ability of the internet to make large amounts of data accessible to many people all at once. Um, provides really an opportunity for people who do have a particular social agenda or cause that they want to publicize or promote. It makes it much easier for them to get that information mm -hmm. out there. Um, and oftentimes governments are going to try and label what they're doing criminal, but there's certainly um, a, a strong argument to be made that what they're doing is really um, pursuing the public interest. So we can it's it's difficult because oftentimes we may not agree with their means, but at least for many of these individuals, uh, they see it as okay. their ends are justified. Right, but where do you draw the line? I mean, for example, there's a spectrum. If we just take uh, PayPal, um, you know, there were attempts to uh, basically by these people to say to people who have PayPal accounts, don't have them because we don't like what they're doing. That sounds like a perfectly legitimate form of protest. Then there were attempts to uh, flood the PayPal site to bring it down. I suppose you could say that's a bit like having a, a big demonstration in a city centre if it's only for a period of time. But, for example, should there be an attempt, say, to publish the details of PayPal account holders because someone's hacked in? That, that does seem to be something very different, doesn't it? It does, and I, and I don't want to say that it's okay to disclose other people's sensitive private information. I'm certainly not suggesting that. But if, if the issue is, do these individuals see themselves as some sort of social crusaders, then I would say, yes, they do see themselves that way. Um, and I think a lot of people forget sometimes that in uh, many of the recent, um, in, in recent history, civil rights movements, if you want to call it that, or massive protest movements, they have been criminal behavior yeah. has been the forefront of that. So... I mean, we can sit and label something a crime and not a crime, and, and it may be crime by the legal definition of what is and is not a crime, but do these people see themselves as doing something for the greater good and, and don't see themselves as just vandal, uh, you know, vandals and, and, and criminals? And yes, I think they do see themselves that way. How, how we as society as a whole views them, I think, is a more difficult question, okay. and I think there are people who obviously are going to agree with their methods because they'll believe okay. that the ends justify the means and, and not. All right. what, what links these issues together, it links it with News International in a way, is who the we is here, isn't it? I mean, you know, obviously not in things yeah. like Millie Dowler, everyone was horrified, everyone's horrible about the Sarah Payne thing, but you know, there are situations where a newspaper might say, well, we've taken, done things that, that actually are technically illegal, but we have a public defense. We, we've exposed an, an arms dealer, for example, who's breaking UN san sanctions. And, and we have a right, and, and actually it's enshrined in law on a lot of these issues, to say we've got a public defense. But do the kind of people that Hani Vakuri is talking about have a moral, never mind a legal right, to say, well, we're just like, we're the new version of newspapers. With a new version of, uh, of uh, investigative journalism, yes. Well, they, they are the new version in some respects, and they are replacing some forms of investigative journalism. So I think there's a, that's a good argument. But there's, of course, also a clearly an argument in, in relation to News International that there are some techniques of journalism that might include hacking too, which are unacceptable uh, and which, which but not only it's, horrify it's, public it's opinion. It's drawing these boundaries now. is becoming, I mean, ethically, never mind legally, very difficult, isn't it? It is becoming difficult, and that's partly to do with the, the technological issues, which we've just been hearing about, but it's also partly to do with the, the concentrated assault that's been on the concept of the public interest over the last 25 or 30 years. Uh, many of the most famous 
Nobel Prize winning economists regard the concept of public interest as, as a meaningless concept and actually think that people who who defend the public interest are, are maniacs and extremists and must be combated. So there's a, you know, a whole attempt to make sure that the, the question of the public interest is not raised and is, is removed from statute in, in a whole range of okay. areas. So that, that's, a, that's a kind of key issue as well, which goes in, which, which uh, uh, meshes in with the question of technology. But I mean, is there a danger, uh, Bill Buchanan? We, I mean, it's this balance between trying to protect privacy and criminalizing people. I mean, i uh, give you an example. I. Uh, it took me about five seconds earlier on this evening to find a download page for uh, something called a low orbit ion collider, which apparently is a bit of software that you can use to engineer these mass floodings of websites to close them down. Now, people, in, I didn't download it, but people in, in the United States have been visited and indeed arrested by the FBI just for having these things in their computer. Yeah, I, th I think we need to understand that we're now moving from an industrial age into this new area, which is an information age, and we're really still learning about how we really protect ourselves and our businesses from malicious purposes, because there are, there are a great deal of motivation uh, out there. There's political gain, there's financial gain. So I, I think businesses need to understand how they protect themselves so there, there has been a little bit of a malaise with inside businesses and organisations to say, well, it doesn't really matter if we're being attacked and we lose data or, or something has been compromised. I think there needs to be a much greater but, but investment. I mean, is it the case that, that I mean, as, as I understand it, uh, a, a lot of the attacks that, that these groups like Anonymous and uh, ha have done uh, 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 and Lulzeg, the, the techniques they're using are not actually that sophisticated. Yeah. It's just that the people they're attacking are themselves so lackadaisical. Yeah. They don't have defences against it. That's, that's extremely true. If you ask any good security professional, they'll say that the easiest person to defend against is the standard script kiddie. That's really the individual who's using standard tools that are widely available on the internet because all the professionals actually know how to defend against them. We've actually found the biggest risk is serious and unorganised crime groups, typically outside the UK, that have sophisticated methods, they have software programmers, they can actually pay for things to be developed for uh, them. Okay. Once you change something, then it makes it more difficult okay. to protect against. Well, Hani Fakuri, I'm, I'm interested to attitudes there, for example, in the EFF, to whether you would defend some of these hacking activities. I mean, I, again, you, you know, for having a legitimate campaign, yes, but for example, uh, Bill Buchanan there was mentioning criminals. If you hack into, a say, PayPal or anywhere else and publish lists of names, those names and passwords can obviously be used by criminals, even if the people who are doing the hacking are, are just anarchists or just trying to have a laugh. Well, we at EFF have always tried to approach every situation in its own unique set of facts. So we, we take every... You know, people approach us about working with them and representing them, and we take a case-by-case -case individual approach. Um, I, I would say that we, with respect to, you know, publishing lists of people's personal private information, you know, obviously we don't support that, and we don't yeah. encourage people to do that. Um, and to the extent that the law, you know, criminalizes people who engage in that type of activity, you know, that's not thing we really have... We don't take too much issue with that. We do, however, take issue with the the way the law, at least in the United States, the way the law is oftentimes interpreted. It, it's it's meant to cover that type of okay. pretty obviously criminal behavior, but oftentimes it gets used in a way to criminalize much broader categories of behavior okay. that may not be so. Criminal. Honey, and for, for Curry, uh, sorry, I'm 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 sorry to interrupt you. We are going to have to leave completely out of time. Look, thank you all very much indeed. Now, you can imagine, imagine Derek Bateman's reaction when we asked her for a film on this weekend's Royal Wedding in Edinburgh between Zara Phillips and Mike Tyndall. He protested that it wasn't a royal wedding at all, and the palace didn't want people turning up on the Royal Mile to spectate. But we insisted he head off to Edinburgh in the rain. And here's the result. All the world loves a royal wedding. Only this won't be one. It is officially a private family affair. It just happens to be closing part of Edinburgh, requires police and private security. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. 
and the monarch will be there. And who else has the timetable for their horse trials at Hopeton House adjusted to allow guests to get out of Jodhpur's and into tails on time? We know this is a very private affair because the Minister of Canongate Kirk, the Reverend Neil Gardner, won't do interviews. Actually, neither will Edinburgh City Council. Well, they've been doing a, a bit of a, an all-round tidy up here at the old uh, Canongate Kirk in the Royal Mile ahead of the big event, which personally I think is a very good idea because the last time I walked around the cemetery here, there was clear evidence that local jakeys had been using it as an overnight stop. The inside word... OK, the Daily Mail says Zara was keen to sell the event to Hello magazine for half a million, but was scuppered by her mum. Yes, there is a rumour around of that, and I say they should have gone for it. That £500,000 that's rumoured could have um, paid for those pictures could also have paid the £500,000 for the police and security for the event. So, um, yes, bring on the hellos.